guards or try to make friends. Sabrin Birk Holman was born in Izanat Taringen. So after leaving school in 1964, Bergman Polo was initially not admitted to university and then entered into a two-year internship at the Institute for Forensic Medicine at Humboldt University in Berlin. In 1966, she began to study medicine and in 1972, she graduated with a diploma in, get this, medicine. From 1979 to 1980, she worked as a lung specialist and in 1980, she earned a medical doctorate for that field. From 1980 to 1985, she was a medical director for the Polyclinic Department for Lung Diseases and Tuberculosis in Berlin Friedrichshafen. From 1985 to 1990, she was a medical director at the District Office for Lung Diseases and Tuberculosis in Ich Berlin. So since 1990, Bergmann Pohl had been the patron for the German Disabled Persons in Germany, or the ABIDEV and since 2003, President of the Berlin Red Cross. Also in 2003, she had been a member of the Presidentium of the International Federation and has been the Vice President since 2007. But now, medical stuff aside, very good achievements for East Germany, we're going to talk about politics. In 1981, she joined the CDU or the Christlich Demokratik Union of Deutschland one of the bloc parties within the GDR, and in 1987 she was elected to the district board in East Berlin. So in the general elections of March 1990, the only three elections ever held and the last elections ever held in the GDR or East Germany, she was elected to the People's Chamber, which on the 5th of April elected her as president. On the same day, the 5th of April, the parliament was abolished and the state council, the People's Collective Presidency, was also abolished. So under the constitution of the GDR, the Democratic Republic of Germany, the president of the, the president of the People's Chamber was now the ex officio vice president of the GDR. As such, Bergmann Pohl was provisional head of the state as well. So in this role, she presided over the People's Chamber, formally petitioning to join the Federal Republic of Germany on the 23rd of August, as well as the overwhelming approval for the unification treaty of the 12th of September. 1990. After German reunification on the 3rd of October 1990, which was yesterday, 29 years ago, she became a member of the Bundestag and along with other leading members of the last GDR government, she was also appointed to special roles such as the Federal Minister for Special Affairs in Chancellor Helmut Kohl's cabinet. So after the 1990 all-German election, she was appointed Parliamentary Secretary in the Federal Ministry of Health on the 18th of January 1991. Following her party's defeat in the 1998 election, she departed from the government on the 27th of October 1998, but remained in the Bundestag until 2002. Where are you? Sabrina, Sabrina, Sab, Sabrina Bergman Pohl is married. She's a cutie in the 80s for sure and has two children, so suck for me, man. She's also a Protestant, which is pretty good as well, so big suck, sucks to suck. But um, she was a member of the People's Chamber of the GDR from 1990, president, president of the People's Chamber from 1990, member of the German Bundestag from 1990 to 2002, and in government offices she was a Minister of Special Affairs from 1990 to 1991, and the Parliamentary State Secretary for the Ministry of Health, from 1991 to 1998, so very fulfilling career. But this just shows you, this just shows you, even the woman can actually reunite Germany. And on the 3rd of October, which was yesterday, Germany was reunited 28, 29 years now. So it just shows you how quick the Cold War has finished and how long it's been since the division of Europe. So it's very interesting. As quick as it started finished so this is interesting man but um what are your thoughts on a uh, German reunification do you like it do you not like it um what do you think about it um the new Germany is kind of uh, but eh, it's not too bad better than the Third Reich but not really setting the standards too high huh, are we and even then they did the uh, um wait hold on sorry sorry still waking up 
woke up at like 11 o'clock so um let me see let me see the autobahn um no smoking laws and then there was um a lot of vegetarian veget veg wait hold on so anyway they did the um autobahn the boats car the volkswagen right the volkswagen people's car and they also did um vegetarian work no smoking anti-smoking only bad things were anti-semitism holocaust and treatment of mediterranean people because italians are pretty darn cool but anyway guys it is time to get out of here it is 2:42, and um not too bad but um angela Merkel's germany goes to E tier, just above the F tier for Fura, so not bad, not bad. Not bad, Angela Merkel, not bad. You're doing good, baby, you're doing good. But um, anyway, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something about Germany or the reunification, and um, I'll see you next time. Um, tomorrow's jazz, probably. I doubt, but let's see. Anyway, guys, know something though. Yeah, all my strength went into one woman that did like. 20 seconds of work, women, but that's something though, not misogynist, for sure. The old ways go, one of the last soldiers cried. March! Then with the now forbidden goose step, they defiantly marched off into history. Once the guards were gone, emotions bottled up for 45 years boiled over. Arguments about the Nazis, the Jews, all the old wounds of Germany. But for most Germans, this is a night to celebrate, not a time to remember the past. Tomorrow, they can worry about the future and the hundreds of billions the new Germany will cost. Tom Fenton, CBS News, Berlin. For at least a second or so, let's go back to Berlin for live pictures of the celebration. There's so much history that comes to mind when you see what's happening with this official celebration of a reunited Germany. Context and perspective in the background, two world wars this century fought over Germany and German deeds, a long punishment period in the wake of World War II for the Germans, and now reunification with all that may mean and may not mean. Still ahead on the CBS Evening News, correspondent Deborah Potter on charges that some room disinfectants that you're using may be useless.